Hello, this is John Canalopoulos from Athens, Greece, Clinical Professor of Ophthalmology, NYU Medical School, New York City, New York. This is a very, very severe epithelial ingrowth. In a LASIK case that was done eight years ago with a keratome elsewhere, you can see that central fold that is full with epithelial ingrowth underneath it. Vision is down to 2080, best corrected 2080. A uh, patient had rubbed his eyes several times. Should note that the patient was retreated. This eye was retreated. You can see here on OCT the immense epithelial ingrowth that's causing also flap thinning. We measured the other eye. Flap was about 120 microns. You can see here the two areas, and these are central of epithelial growth, um, an imminent threat to visual acuity. These are the OCT maps. Uh, right eye is normal. Left eye is the abnormal eye. and You can see the abnormal epithelium on the bottom right. These are the Placido topography showing the extreme irregularity, uh, both on the rings and on the topography. This is the Cassini multi-spot LED um, reflection topography, and you can see the uh, very serious uh, irregularity. Uh, I'll describe to you our technique that we also use in primary um, uh, street area for flaps. Here, uh, we're going to go in with a Sinsky hook and uh, pulling from uh, uh, in out uh, I'm going to try and prepare the flap so I don't remove a lot of uh, free bands of epithelium. I'm um, going in with a Sinsky to free the flap. And then I'm going to use uh, preheated um, instruments, um, spatula instruments. This is the crescent blade. I'm going to try and remove the epithelium from the bed. They are preheated in sterile water. And I'm underlining this ster sterile water. So this is extremely hypotonic at 55 degrees Celsius. Uh, as we know, and again with the crescent very carefully on the underside of the flap, I'm trying to remove this very big band. I'm very careful because as you saw on the OCT, the flap thickness is extremely thin. Now here I am uh, laying my flap on an instrument that is preheated and with a dry wet, I'm going to try and as you can see here, I'm very successful in stripping off this band of epithelium that was underneath the flap, creating that humongous crease. Um, so there it is. I'm heating up now the flap. Again, sterile water at 55 degrees Celsius. I'm trying to avoid having this water come in contact with the stroma because this will cause significant edema and uh, potentially endothelial cell damage. This is sterile water, so it's very hypotonic. It swells the uh, flap. I'm going to reposition the flap, then irrigate uh, as I would normally. Uh, and of course, I'm going to suture this flap in place to try and uh, take out those stria. But look here centrally uh, that uh, what I know uh, now in retrospect is epithelium. The epithelium gives the illusion that there's still uh, epithelium underneath the flap. So the way the epithelium has uh, remodeled in the surface gives me the uh, illusion that there's still epithelial ingrowth underneath. I'm re-lifting the flap. See here that I'm uh, wiping with a dry whack. Uh, in fear of not to tear the flap, making sure there's no epithelium, putting things back into place, drop of uh, milky suspension to make sure the flap is sitting in place. And now very carefully, seven interrupted 10 on island sutures to stretch and anchor the flap into place to uh, uh, really uh, uh, bring the lips of the flaps together tightly and not allow uh, mechanically any epithelium to go in. Um, this procedure uh, does require uh, great care. It should probably be done by a cornea surgeon as cheese wiring through the flap may uh, create significant tears of the flap. Um, so as you can see here, uh, square knots and trying to bring a lot of tension in, uh, bring the knots out, uh, trim them and bury them in the uh, uh, outside cornea bandage contact lens. Uh, we're going to see that patient uh, here uh, the day after. Um, remove the lens, you can see how perfect the flap looks, how fast the epithelium, surface epithelium has remodeled. It looks pristine, vision uncorrected is already at 2040. You can see here the suture track peripherally in the flap. Uh, one more here. These are uh, OCT images showing the sutures going through the flap and the outside stroma. Again, another one here. Uh, remarkable images uh, by uh, the OptiView a tear segment OCT, uh, another one here, and uh, on the panda cam you can see already normalization, uh, very flattening in the central cornea, 
seen here. This is the next day pentacam. And now we're going uh, a month later. Time to remove the sutures. You can see the uh, flap is absolutely pristine. Vision is 2020. I want to underline that no other treatment, 2020 vision. Again, pentacams now one month later. Uh, you can see how nice and flat uh, the central cornea is. You can see that the posterior cornea curvature has changed. This is the difference before and after, which is a, a testament to how the superficial regularity can throw off the pentacam. These are now the placido disc images. See how perfect the rings are and much more normal topography. This is a placido comparison, pre and post uh, ironing, epithelial and growth removal and suturing. And this is again um, before and after the difference bottom uh, uh, left extremely remarkable. Now OCT images a month later, uh, the flap looks perfect. It has really uh, leveled out um, and uh, thus uh, uh, the extremely uh, good vision. You can see here comparison on the bottom day uh, after and uh, right before we took the sutures, how the swelling has gone away. Again, bottom day after, top day removed the sutures a month later. There's an OCT image of the epithelium being normalized as well. This is the final result, 2020 vision, excellent result, very challenging case. I hope you found this interesting. This is John Canalopoulos signing out. This is a similar case, an older hyperopic LASIK uh, case of mine, uh, had a serious tree branch injury. You can see here a cornea incision on his left eye at the 3 o'clock position that has folded the flap. Fortunately, not all of the LASIK flap. Uh, it's been a few days, so the flap has epithelialized the underside of the flap and obviously the um, open stroma. What I'm doing here is with two dry Wexel sponges, I'm trying to uh, move away all the epithelial strands. I decided in this case not to um, float the whole the whole flap because the visual axis was uh, perfectly preserved. So I'm just uh, pulling out the uh, edge of the flap enough for me to allow me to remove all of the epithelium from the uh, exposed flap and the underside underside of the flap. And obviously here I've been a big fan of uh, placing um, several sutures in order to lock down the possible pathway for epithelial cells to enter the interface. So what you're seeing here is a 10 on nylon with a CS needle, 160 degree CS needle. Um, the, obviously the knot will be uh, uh, is trimmed and will be buried in the um, uh, cornea bed. And then again, another suture here, I'm trying to avoid the uh, three o'clock position, the exact three o'clock position, because that carries a small uh, incision a small um, incision from the tree branch that has tore a little bit the edge of the flap as well. So uh, procedure completed. Uh, as I noted previously, I preserved the flap opposition to the visual axis of the patient. You can note that these sutures are quite tight. They will obviously cause some astigmatism short term, but uh, they will be removed uh, one month later here, uh, immediately after the procedure, you can see the sutures and the flaps. This is uh, one month later after suture removal, patients back to 2020, and this the same patient without the sutures. I hope you found these cases interesting. This is John Canalopoulos signing out. Thank you very much for your attention.